Hi! Is up everybody, I'm No Luck Skiven here with your afternoon snap, and today I'm gonna be going over this Friday's community battle, even or odds two, where you have the opportunity to win a season pass in this event on the official Marvel Snap Discord. If you want more information, you can head over to the official Marvel Snap Discord to check out this post, but this event is going to be this Friday, November 15th from 2 to 5 p.m. EST. During that time, you have to win three Conquest matches against other players in the event, and you've got three hours to do it, so it's pretty reasonable that most players are able to get it done. But today, I'm going to provide some inspiration and recommendations for what I think are the best decks to look at for these restrictions. There's always restrictions for how you have to build your deck for a community battle, and in this event, even or odd two, your deck can only contain cards with an even attack power or an odd attack power. You have to pick one or the other, and then every card in your deck has to fit that criteria. So if you pick even, then you can only have cards in your deck with 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, or 20 power. And if you pick odd, then, oh, and negative eight. Negative eight also works for even. Uh, and if you pick odd, then you have to choose between negative three, negative one, one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. That might be it. Are there thirteens? I think that's it. I just double checked and I think I actually said everything correctly just there. Uh, I want to get into some deck lists now. So the first one that I want to look at is what I think is like deck zero. I think this is where a lot of players are going to start, and I think it's probably the best deck or one of the best decks that you can play, and it's Silver Surfer. As you take a look at this deck, this is basically a stock Silver Surfer deck list. There are a lot of even attack-powered cards in Silver Surfer, and the only thing that you really lose in this list is Luke Cage. And I think that that does hurt the deck a little bit. It's going to mean that some of your hazmat plays could be a little bit awkward, but still you know that hazmat is coming and your opponent doesn't. And typically the hazmat plays are plays where you give like everything minus 20 and it just comes down to having less committed cards in each individual location than your opponent. And that's generally something that you can plan for. You're gonna have one big location with like Wong, Mystique, Hazmat, Odin, and then you can just like not even play anything in the other two locations. So uh, that I think is sweet. You could go one other option and you could play Sage. Though Sage specifically seemed weird in this format where you're encouraged and your opponents are encouraged to play a bunch of cards with the same power level or like a more confined range of power levels. So I figured Sage might be a little bit awkward. I don't think I included it in any of my decks for that specific reason, but if you feel like Sage could be good, feel free to include it yourself. This is a great deck. I've showcased this deck on the channel before. I'm sure I've got some videos. You might have to check my YouTube shorts. I don't remember if I have any more long form videos around this deck, but I was playing it a ton a few months ago, maybe even as long as a year ago. I remember wanting to play this when, whenever Sebastian Shaw came to Spotlight Caches is when I started playing this deck. So figure out when that was and you can uh, find some more content with this deck in my video history, but it's very, very good. And like I said, basically this exact list is what I was rocking on the ranked ladder and uh, global leaderboard to pretty good success. There's a lot of cool combos here. It basically plays three powerful on reveal cards, Hazmat, Ironheart, and Silver Surfer, with Silver Surfer being the most powerful of them, and then Absorbing Man to copy up on those abilities, Wong and Mystique to trigger those abilities multiple times, and Odin to trigger those abilities like multiple multiple times and you can go absolutely crazy if you walk mystique play a card into that location it triggers four times and then if you owed in that location it triggers 16 more times so that can be absolutely fantastic sarah and magic allow you to do it 
all because some of this is a little bit higher of a curve for a Silver Surfer deck. And then Brood and Sebastian Shaw are the best card to put these pumps onto with uh, Mystique also being able to copy Sarah. That's another interesting play to look out for. There's honestly a lot of potential for Silver Surfer decks. And we're even gonna look a I'm gonna take a look at another Silver Surfer deck in just a moment. Let's actually do that now. So if we go over to here, I've got an even more surfing and I've left some blank spots just to remind myself that there's some cards that I do not own that would also be good in Silver Surfer. And this is a uh, less combo centric, not gonna run the Wong or the Mystique, but going to run Sarah and Hope Summers to allow you to play multiple three cost cards on the final turn of the game. Forge Brood, Sebastian Shaw, Silver Surfer, that is a combo everybody's familiar with, with Gwenpool being able to give multiple pumps up if it is able to hit the Brood or the Sebastian Shaw. You could also play, um, oh, what's the dude called? Um, Miss, no, not Mysterio. Mr. Sinister as like a mini brood that also works well with Gwenpool and Iron Lad. Iron Lad, of course, being great on brood and they, they work with Forge as well, but the uh, Mr. Sinister will not work with Silver Surfer. But some other cards that you could play are um, Makari, that is a free three cost card. So that one works. And I am just um, sorting out my client here so that I can refresh my memory. Uh, Rogue is a even powered card, so that could see a little bit of play, though that wasn't the main one I was thinking of. I know one is the new release that just came out today. Malekith could also be a great card for this event in Even Surfer. I don't necessarily recommend picking up Malekith just for this for fun event where you don't really need it necessarily, but it could be a fun way to showcase this new card if you're looking for an additional home for it. The main draw behind Malekith is probably that you might eschew playing Forge and just run Malekith and a bunch of three cost cards so that you are guaranteed getting a really good rate out of your Malekith as it will always hit a three cost card. Also, Nocturne is a great card for this sort of mid-rangey Silver Surfer deck. Could give you outs to other people playing Magic as well if you come across the other build. It's a little bit of interaction, which this deck is otherwise lacking. Uh, just the ability to control some locations and also move can definitely help you surprise your opponent with where your power output is going to be on the final turn of the game. One other thing that I've heard some players talking about on the official Discord, and I think is one of the players, that, well, one of the places that players might first look, is Arashem. Odd Arashem, of course, because you, you basically pick a build around card, see which it, that card is, if it's odd or even, and then try to find all of the odd or even cards that work with that. And Arashem does definitely lose a little bit by going for odds only. You don't get to play Quinjet and you lose a lot of card generation. You don't get to play uh, Agent Coulson or Nick Fury. And then you also lose a Lyoth at the top of the curve, but you still get the energy generation out of Arjem, right? That's not on the screen here. But you still get the energy generation out of Arjem, which is pretty insane. And if you look at the rest of the cards in this deck, you still get to play a lot of really powerful RHM cards. Cable and Copycat are the nice little information duo that we've seen before. Bobius is nice. Both of those previous decks I showcased are Sarah decks. So being able to turn Sarah off is just really strong. And I do think that like keeping that Silver Surfer deck in mind is a really smart idea. So Shadow King as a potential tech card and Cosmo are both really strong ways to deal with that. We also have Shang-Chi and Enchantress. Those are pretty straightforward Alive cards, most of these, to be honest. With Valentina kind of being a pocket card for myself, it could potentially be Luke Cage or something if, if like you're really worried about the hazmat version. Uh, but one thing that I really like with Valentina is that when you play it alongside Shadow King, 
you get to reset the negative debuff that Valentina gives to that generated card. And it's one of the few card generation cards that you actually still get to play. So Gable and Valentina, I think, fit nicely into this. And then the top of the curve, you still get to play Mockingbird, which is one of the best Arshim cards. You don't get to play Blob. I did not mention that one. That is a huge hit. But you do get to play Dr. Doom as a way to spread power to all three locations, and Legion can also just win you games because of turning off Limbo, or just there's a good location like Luke's Bar, and you get to shut your opponent out of the game. So I think that Arishem still has enough tools, and then of course you also get 16 random cards that Arishem gives you, and those could be even cost cards and just surprise your opponents in various ways. So I think that Arishem definitely still has what it takes in a format like this, despite losing some of its better cards, I would definitely say. But if you were looking to play Arishem, it could certainly still be possible and still be fun. Another strategy that might be fun is Odd Affliction, which I've got a ton of recommendations on the screen here for. And you can mix and match and pick which ones you think are the best. On the right side of the screen, we've got the core of the deck, plus a few other cards, but US Agent, Luke Cage, Man-Thing, and Ajax are really the core of all Affliction strategies, with the only thing this deck is missing really being Hazmat. And initially, I wrote this deck off because I was like, okay, no Hazmat, can't play Affliction. Then I realized there's actually a lot of cards that you can play, and maybe this deck could work. So. Other than the main Affliction package, there's a few other packages that you could potentially look to play. We've got Shadow King, Valentino, Luke Cage that I just talked about, which also Anti-Venom is really cool in that combination because Shadow King and Luke Cage get to reset the card that Anti-Venom gives negative power to. Frigga also is really cool once you are playing that package. Frigga can also be cool with the Pixie Mobius Sandman package that I showed off a few times this week in some YouTube shorts. I realized that this curve, especially Pixie curves, are really conductive to playing Wiccan, potentially. So it's going to be hard to fit in all of this, but I've definitely seen some Wiccan affliction lists. And you could maybe fit Pixie Mobius into that if you think that that is good. Shen Chi's just a good card that, you know, when we're looking at odd cost cards, I wanted to bring up Shang Chi again. Uh, Red Guardian. Not a card that you could play in those Silver Surfer decks, but definitely a powerful three-cost card that also does a little bit of afflictioning, which is sweet. Uh, Spider-Ham, Kitty Pride, and Wasp, just interesting cards to fill out the curve if you were playing a Pixie build or a Wicked build. Uh, so all really interesting things to consider there. The next deck that I wanted to take a look at is Agent even. So let me get this graphic off the screen. Agent Venom, one of the most powerful cards in the game. Our last season pass card, I was trying to figure out what are the best shells for Agent Venom. And there's definitely some cool cards that like to see play around Agent Venom that you can play. The biggest card that you are missing from Agent Venom, and it winds up having some pretty big implications, is Bast. Once you aren't playing Bast, it makes it a little bit riskier to play all of these zero power cards that you typically really appreciate playing alongside Agent Venom. So one thing that I was thinking could be an alternate option to that is to play Ravona and then just play all the zeros. Play every zero, play Ravona, and then you, can, you can't use Ravona if you use Agent Venom. Um, but it's probably worth the trade-off because you're just hoping in the same way, like you don't really want to play Bast in the games where you are able to play Agent Venom. It's going to shrink all of your cards a little bit, but 
you don't always have Agent Venom. So this just makes the deck more consistent. You could certainly try it without Agent Venom, uh, but I think that Ravona works with a number of the cards that Agent Venom works with, that it's probably worth it. Uh, I'm trying a few different things here. Again, got like Iron Lad plus Brood combo, which works well with Agent Venom. Just a bunch of things that are like zero power across the board. Fina might be kind of bad. I haven't really tested the curve with this, and you can't play Kitty Pride alongside Fina, so she's definitely missing that, but Ravona to make your cards cost a little bit less definitely helps fill out the curve and allow for some good Fina things. And then you're just playing like some really good combos. Agent Venom Iron Man, fantastic. Agent Venom Mysterio, fantastic. Both of those, Agent Venom is basically giving plus eight power and uh, Agent Venom onto Brood plus six power. All of that stuff is still as good as it always is. One other avenue, we're getting sillier as the video goes on for sure. But one other potential home for Agent Venom is Even Bro. You can't play odd Cerebro decks. You cannot play Cerebro 3. You cannot play Cerebro 5. So the options are Cerebro 2 or maybe Cerebro 4, potentially with Agent Venom. I don't really have a uh, super high confidence in this list. But it does seem like it could maybe do some cool stuff. You've got Mystique now being able to copy Iron Man and Claw in addition to Cerebro. And it can also copy Sarah in games where you've magicked. Hope Summers is also helping. You've got all three of these cards to help with a significantly bigger curve uh, with a whole bunch of five cost cards here. And then we've got Agent Venom with Mysterio, Cerebro, Mystique, and Iron Man. It's not, oh, and it pumps up magic as well. It's not pumping up most of the deck, just because again, you can't always lean on Agent Venom. And this deck, instead of playing Bast and pumping up some of the other cards, it's just playing a bunch of cards that don't really need to get pumped. And so sometimes Agent Venom is just a 2-4 that you're still able to pump up with Cerebro, but you're just not using Agent Venom to pump up the Cerebro and then have it pump itself. But when this deck is able to go off, it is able to do some really cool stuff. Magic does a number of things in this deck as well, in addition to just allowing you to play with a higher curve. It also allows you to take care of some troublesome locations. And you can also play Nocturne for that. I think Nocturne could very well see play over like Leech or something. Uh, I'm just realizing Cloak Hope Summers is kind of an interesting combo and Cloak Nocturne could be a fun combo as well. Uh, so those are all things to look for. I think the curve is varied enough that you can get away with Miss Marvel, which I forgot to mention is another Mystique uh, target. Mystique is eating well in this deck. This deck definitely seems a little bit silly, but when we're in community battles, we're here to have fun, and I think Cerebro is really fun. So I was scanning for a bunch of different options to play with Cerebro, and honestly, it just doesn't seem like Cerebro 2 is viable now at all since the nerf to Storm. It's just uh, too, too awkward to play Cerebro 2, and Cerebro 2 is also commonly a deck that wants to play like Blue Marvel to get a little bit more power, which that's another thing that you just can't do in Even or Odd 2. And the final deck that I wanted to look at, definitely a bit of a brew. I'll say this is the concept of an idea here, and that is Spectrum. Gene going, there are potentially, like, I just wanted to take a look at some other options because I feel like for evens, I really just had Silver Surfer. I feel like if you're gonna play even, Silver Surfer is so strong. So I wanted to take a look because I feel like the odd Affliction has like so many different ways that you could potentially build that, that I just wanted to see what are some even things that you could do. And for that, I found Ongoing has a lot of even power cards and it's kind of like an ongoing lockout style deck. 
it might lack a little bit on the cheap cards. You might even want to play like just straight up a uh, Nightcrawler and you might need to play something like Dazzler despite not having like great ways to fill locations, but this deck is also really getting by with Professor X and Goose locking some locations down and Jean Grey locking some locations down, all of which allow you to make better use of a Lyoth. War Machine now at a 4-6 is like pretty reasonable numbers, but it also can get pumped up by Spectrum and allow you to play into some of these locked down locations with a little bit more flexibility. I forget exactly why I put Howard in the deck. I know that it is a uh, one power or, or one cost two power ongoing card, which is obviously really good. But uh, I think I just liked the idea of with these lockdown elements, knowing what your top card is, so that you just have a little bit more information to prepare yourself for how and where you need to lock down. So I think that Howard actually makes a lot of sense in a deck like this. There are some other cards that I've left out here, like uh, Mr. Fantastic you could play instead of or in addition to Ms. Marvel. Wong, you might notice, is really only here to copy uh, Spectrum's ability, to get additional value out of Spectrum's ability. Yes, you could play Star-Lord in your Wong location, sure. Um, you could also play Gamora in the deck. That is, it seemed like there was enough expensive cards already, and it doesn't have like that much synergy. It's good with Jean Grey, Goose of Professor X though. And that is the, the only two Guardians that you can play are Star-Lord and Gamora. Uh, and Mantis, technically, but that's not typically one that people think of. The other ones, uh, yeah, all have odd power. So I don't really think that there's a deck for them. I mean, I guess you could play them alongside Storm and Legion. Huh. It's not really something I thought about. I kind of uh, rode off Storm because you can't play it with War Machine, but you could still play Storm, Legion, some Guardians, Nebula... There's, there's an idea of a deck there, and I was looking at some other options as well, just to talk about some things. And by the way, feel free to leave in the comments your suggestions. I'll also leave a link in the video description to a Reddit thread where I will be posting this video and asking other people for their suggestions as well, just because I think that that's a fun discussion to have and, and gets everybody's brains flowing. Um, so feel free to weigh in on that thread as well. But there are some things that I felt like didn't work and we can switch over to this tab and maybe look at some things. So if we... Oh, I don't want to see all variants yet. Let's just see favorites, because otherwise we are getting information overloaded here. Sorry, and I think this is, like, bugging out in a weird way. But there's the classic archetypes, right? Discard, move, and destroy. And I just wanted to talk about each of those briefly. Discard, all of the setup cards are odd, or most of this, most of the discard cards are odd, and most of the payoff cards, Scorn, Morbius, basically everything except for Swarm and Proxima Midnight, uh, but uh, also Apocalypse and Hellcarrier, all of those are even. So that becomes really tricky. And Hella discard, Hella and Modoc obviously can't get played together. You can play Hella plus a lot of the discard cards, um, where is uh, Blade right here, but all of the cards that you are typically discarding are 10s and 12s and 14s and 20s, not cards that then you would be able to play in the deck. There are no 13s, as we discussed earlier in this video. Uh, so that is a little bit awkward, and I'm not even sure how many 11s there are, to be totally honest. How many 11s? I'm just going to check that real quick. How many 11 power cards are there in Marvel Snap? Okay, there's Orca and Scar. That would be, that would be a pretty disappointing discard deck, I think. Um, the other kind of uh, parasitic strategies have some similar problems. Destroys the stock list is mostly even. All of the like payoff cards are even, but 
all of the destroy cards except for Carnage are odd. Venom, Killmonger, and Deathlock are all odd. Uh, Deadpool and Nova are odd as well, but then like X-23, Wolverine, and all of those payoff cards are even. There's still like maybe a way that you could make it work, but I think it is a little bit awkward. Um, so in the intro to this video, I remembered that uh, Hobgoblin, negative eight, is an even cost card. There is potentially a strategy with Annihilus, Galactus, Sentry, and Hobgoblin, but I'm not totally sure it's there. You can't play any ramp, which significantly limits your potential win cons with Galactus. You can play Nimrod in a deck like that as well, so if you can activate Galactus, then you can get all those Nimrods. I do think, like, awkwardly, a weird thing to play for could be, like, War Machine, hope to get a really weird location, play Nimrod, and then play Galactus in, like, Sanctum Sanctorum or something to surprise your opponent on the final turn for a huge win. I think your mileage may vary with a strategy like that, but seems like it could be an interesting option that I at least wanted to mention. Uh, move decks kind of have a specific problem. I think it's surmountable. I think that a move deck could work. Most of the cards in move are even, except the very best card. Madam Web, I still don't own it, but it is an odd cost card, so I could play even move. But if you were looking to play a move deck, it is a little bit awkward because you won't be able to play Madam Web. Dagger, Human Torch, Ghost Spider, Iron Fist, those are all still even. Cloak is good. You lose Doctor Strange and Aranya, but I think you still have enough tools to be able to make this deck work. You don't get to play Vulture, you don't get to play Cosmo, you don't get to play Heimdall, but you do get to play Eliath, which is funny enough in this tag because it has the word uh, remove in its text. So I was wondering, why is Eliath there? Uh, last thing I wanted to discuss on this move tag, though, is Scream, which actually, odd Scream could work. You do lose a few things. You lose Kingpin, you lose Spider-Man Miles Morales, wherever that is. But you do have a lot of tools still. Uh, normal Spider-Man, Polaris, Stegron. Uh, you don't have Arrow, you don't have Magneto, but you still get Craven and you get Scream. You could throw in something like Silk because with Craven that is still able to get some additional power on it. You could supplement that with other things like Jeff or what have you. And then probably just some tech, right? It's an odd deck. So you get to play tech, you get to play any number of Cosmo, Shang-Chi, um, uh, Red Guardian. There's a lot of different options that I've gone through throughout this video. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Let me know if you think anything I didn't cover could be good, or if you're just going to play one of my main recommendations here, either RSM or uh, Surfer Deck or Affliction. I think those are going to be the top three, but I'm curious. And do you think that any of these decks that I just kind of like briefly mentioned here, these honorable mentions could see play? Is there some sweet support that I am missing? Let me know. But for today, that is going to be it for me. Thank you guys very much for watching. I will be back with some gameplay from this event, probably as Saturday's video, new Marvel Snap videos every single day. Usually those are YouTube shorts, but I do occasionally. Oh, one other thing that I just wanted to say on this topic, because there were some players that uh, I posted a YouTube short about my Pixie Mobius Sandman deck, which was, um, when did I play that? I don't even remember, but I posted some YouTube shorts. I think I played it the beginning of this season or the end of last season. Just thought it was like an interesting and underexplored combination. And a lot of people are playing Sarah and Sandman and Mobius are really good cards against both of those strategies. And uh, yeah, a lot of people just didn't recognize that Mobius Sandman could be a combo, but it is now because Sandman makes everything cost one more. I just deleted it from the deck, but Sandman now makes everything cost one more. So it is a combo with Mobius, 
which I think is something worth exploring and uh, yeah, a little bit underutilized. And with that, I think I will call it there, but I will be back with some gameplay of Evens or Odds 2 coming soon. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given. Peace.